Today's lesson is called the wedding ring, from grass to gold. Day one. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff, and I'm Roger. And today we're talking about getting married. And of course, if you get married, of course, it's a good idea for the bride and the groom to exchange wedding rings. And、uh, so we're talking about where this tradition came from—the wedding ring from grass to gold. From grass to gold. What a range here, because grass. Well, you can find grass pretty much anywhere. Go to a park, go to a field somewhere, and you can find grass. No problem at all. But gold—that's a precious metal. You can't really find that anymore on planet Earth unless you go to a jeweler shop, or unless you want to go panning in a river in Northern California or Alaska, or if you want to dig a mine somewhere and find gold that way. But yeah, I don't see the connection here from grass to gold. Oh, I think I get it. We are talking about wedding rings, and wedding rings these days are very often made from this precious metal, gold. But maybe, just maybe, back in time, there the very first wedding rings, thousands of years ago, or something like that, were made not from gold, but from grass. Hmm. How intriguing. How interesting. Very interesting, but I think、uh, most brides these days would not stand for a wedding ring made out of grass. It's got to be at least one or two carats of a diamond, and of course, solid gold as well. But、uh, in any case, we're talking about the history of the wedding ring. I guess they started out being made from grass. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson, and we'll be right back to talk about it. The wedding ring. From grass to gold, simply look at someone's left hand, and you might learn something about them, whether they're married or not. Today, many married people wear a wedding ring on their left fourth finger, appropriately named the ring finger, which represents love and loyalty to their spouse. But how did a ring come to mean so much? 大家好，今天第一个单词我们看到的是 loyalty。这个字当做名词，代表忠诚、忠心的意思。例如 ，The workers show their boss a great deal of respect and loyalty. 员工向他们的老板展现出极大的尊重和忠诚。Okay, everyone, we're back. Remember, we're talking about wedding rings. Yes, the name of our article is "The Wedding Ring from Grass to Gold." And yes, apparently, the first wedding rings. Were made from grass, but like Roger alluded to earlier, nowadays women are not going to accept rings made from grass. Not a chance. In fact, you probably can't get a woman to marry you. Let's say there, boys, if you only have a ring made of gold, either. So grass rings aren't going to work, and a golden ring.、Mm, That's probably not going to work either. There's going to have to be a big rock on that ring. You're going to need some gold, maybe some platinum too, and then also a rock like a diamond or a sapphire or something like that. That's what wedding rings are all about these days for women. Guys nowadays usually just wear a very simple wedding band made out of solid gold or solid platinum or something well, like that. Well, stainless steel or stainless steel. You have a stainless steel wedding ring. Oh、uh, no, actually it's silver. But in any case, that's、uh, a precious、yeah. metal. That that's still、uh, that's true, still yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty I, good. That's still I, pretty good. But still basic compared to wedding rings for females. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with our lesson. Okay, so in the first paragraph it says, simply look at someone's left hand. And you might learn something about them, whether they're married or not. So many years ago, when I was a single man and I was scouting for a girlfriend or a future wife, the first thing I usually did was look at their left hand to find out 
if they were available or not. And、uh, from my hometown, of course, there are many more men than there are women. So、uh, single women were really hard to find. Almost every woman in my hometown was wearing a diamond on her left hand. But that's what you do. Just simply look at their left hand, and you'll learn whether they're married or not. Whether something or something else. That just means you want to determine something between two options. There you go. So you look at this person's left hand. Okay, if there is a ring on that hand, on the ring finger of that hand, that person is married. If not, they're not. They're not married. So yes, simply look at someone's left hand, and you might learn something about them, whether they're married. Or not. There you go. Now the next sentence says: Today, many married people wear a wedding ring on their left fourth finger, appropriately named the ring finger, like I said before, which represents love and loyalty to their spouse. Yes, that's what the ring and not the finger. Represents. Okay, now we've got two things to talk about in this sentence here. First of all, we've got the word loyalty. Loyalty is the state of being loyal. Yeah, loyalty is the noun. Loyal is the adjective. You could say something like people with loyalty are loyal. Yeah, these people are solid and faithful friends, companions. You get the idea. But yeah, more generally. A person or a thing with loyalty supports another person, another thing, or another organization without fail. And yes, in a committed married relationship, or in a relationship in which these two people are married, I should say, yeah, there is loyalty there. These two people, the husband and the wife, in most situations, they support one another. They're loyal to one another. There is definitely loyalty in that relationship. And yes, now that we're talking about husbands and wives, let's talk about the. Word spouse. When you're talking about the word spouse, you're talking about either a husband or a wife. That's all there is to it. That's what a spouse is. Exactly. So we're kind of asking this question, but how did a ring come to mean so much? Why is the ring so important when we're talking about weddings or getting married? Of course, when a celebrity gets married, one of the first questions is about the ring. Yes, what kind of ring did your husband give you? How expensive was it? How big is the diamond? How many carats? So that ring, of course, is extremely important. But hey, we haven't always had this tradition. Where did this tradition come from? Well, we're going to try to answer that question. In the rest of our lesson, so let's get to it, everybody. Let's move on now to the next paragraph. We'll listen first. The ancient Egyptians are thought to have been the first to wear wedding rings. In ancient Egyptian culture, the circle was a symbol of eternity because it has no beginning and no end. Therefore, wedding rings likely represented everlasting love. The first rings were made out of braided grasses, but eventually sturdier materials like leather, bone, and ivory were used. More expensive materials came to demonstrate a man's wealth and love for his prospective bride. 第二部分我们看到的单词是 eternity。这个字当做名词，它有永恒、永远的意思。所以我们可以说 ，electronics today are not built for eternity. They are expected to last only a few years. 现在的电子产品不是可以让你使用一辈子的，它们被预期的寿命只有几年而已。再来，我们看到的单词是 braided， 这个字当做形容词，代表编成辫的意思。例如 ，I always see Mary go to school with braided hair. 我常看到 Mary 绑辫子来上学。接下来，我们看到的单词是 sturdy， 这个字当做形容词，它有结实的或是牢固的意思。例如。Joseph 的狗虽然不是世界上跑最快的，但是它的体型相当健壮。英文可以这么说 ：Joseph's dog isn't the fastest in the world, but it has a very sturdy build. 再来，我们看到的单词是 demonstrate， 这个字当做动词，代表显示、展示或是证明的意思。所以我们可以说 ：The experiment demonstrates the effect of not getting enough sleep. 这项实验显示睡眠不足的影响。Okay, folks, we're back, and we're still reading from an article called "The Wedding Ring: From Grass to Gold." Now, I get the feeling that now, right about now, I should say that we're going to start talking about 
grass. So we're going to start talking about the origins of the wedding rings. Yeah, Roger and I both think that, yeah, the first wedding rings were probably made out of grass based on the title of our article. But let's get to the bottom of this and find out for sure. Yeah, let's begin talking about the history of the wedding ring. Get this. The ancient Egyptians are thought to have been the first to wear wedding rings. How about that? The ancient Egyptians, so the wedding ring, it goes all the way back to ancient Egypt. That's pretty amazing. Anyways, let's talk about this word Egyptian. An Egyptian is a person from the country Egypt, and an ancient Egyptian was an inhabitant of this place a really, really long time ago. Then we also have this phrase, are thought to have been. It says, the ancient Egyptians are thought to have been the first to wear wedding rings. That is, this is what people think in regards to this topic. This is an opinion that people hold. This is kind of like common knowledge. Indeed, and uh, people nowadays think that the Egyptians were the first to wear wedding rings. Of course, uh, this happened many centuries ago. Nobody can be 100% sure about that, but based on scholarly research, many scholars or people nowadays believe that the Egyptians were the first to wear wedding rings. Now, in ancient Egyptian culture, the circle was a symbol of eternity because it has no beginning and no end. So here a symbol, of course, is just something that represents something. And in this particular case, though, the symbol was symbolic of eternity or it was a symbol of eternity. It stood for eternity. It represented eternity. Gee, what the heck is eternity? That just means something is infinite. It goes on forever. It does not have a beginning. It does not have an end. It just lives forever. There you go. When we're talking about an eternity, let's say we're talking about a period of time that doesn't end. Yeah, it has no beginning and no end. But yeah, when we're using this word eternity, we're referring to something that is infinite, endless, or which has no end. So yeah, it says here the circle was a symbol of eternity in ancient Egypt. So they thought, hey... That's a perfect symbol for the wedding relationship. Apparently, when two people get married, they're supposed to be together forever. And the wedding ring kind of seals the deal. It cements this bond that these people are supposed to share. Anyways, therefore, wedding rings likely represented everlasting love. The article says it even better than I could. And yeah, the article goes on. It says, the first rings were made out of braided grasses, but eventually sturdier materials like leather, bone, and ivory were used. So there you go. Roger and I were right. Yep, the first wedding rings were indeed made out of grass. Yes, these first rings were made out of braided grasses. Now here, what we're saying is that these grasses were formed into braids. Okay, that's what it means to have a braided grass or some braided grasses, I should say. Yeah, you take the grasses or you take some grass and you braid them together. And yeah, the word braid, usually you hear this word in reference to hair. Yeah, the word braid refers to hair, maybe plant matter, or some other material that has been woven together so as to kind of look like a length of rope. Yeah, braids are usually formed by weaving together three separate strands of thread-like stuff, okay? You put those things together and you form a braid or a braided something. So here we're talking about braided grasses. People took these lengths or strands of grass and they braided them and formed form these braided grass rings. And grass usually is a non-count noun, like uh, how much grass does your yard have? But in this particular case, we're talking about different kinds of grass. So they braided different kinds of grasses together. That's uh, where the first rings came from. But eventually, sturdier materials like leather, bone, and ivory were used. So if something is sturdy, that means it's harder, more reliable, less likely to break or tear. You know, grass is a plant. It's going to dry out and it's going to break eventually. So they started using sturdier 
materials sturdy, sturdier, the sturdiest. Okay, and here sturdy again just means it's strong. It can withstand rough work or rough treatment, etc. So yes, leather can last a long time. The skin of an animal that has been dried out, or bone. You can make those into rings, or you can even use ivory, which is from the tusk of an elephant or even a walrus. Wow. Leather, bone, and ivory. Those materials definitely do sound sturdier than grass does. Anyways, yes, sturdier. That's the comparative form of the adjective sturdy. And yes, very simply, if something is sturdy, it is well built and durable and solid. Yeah, braided grasses. That wouldn't be too bad, but it's not going to last a lifetime. So you're going to need a sturdier material like leather, bone, and ivory. And maybe just maybe yeah. After a while, you'll transition to gold. Yeah, I imagine the ancient Egyptians weren't great with working with precious metals quite yet, so they used materials like leather, bone, and ivory. And soon, yes, we're going to make that transition to precious metals like gold and silver and platinum. So hold your horses; we'll get there soon. We'll soon get to the sturdiest materials, materials that are even sturdier than things like leather. Bone and ivory. Anyways, the next sentence says more expensive materials came to demonstrate a man's wealth and love for his prospective bride. So yeah, maybe the ancient Egyptians could work with precious metals quite well. It was just that not everyone could afford the super sturdy materials because they were also super expensive. Yes, more expensive materials, maybe precious metals. They came to demonstrate or to show a man's wealth and love for his prospective bride. And yes, the verb to demonstrate means to show, to show so that something can be clearly seen. Then we. Also have the word perspective here. The word perspective in this case means or is similar to the words possible or potential. All right, folks. With that, it is time for us to take a break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up day one of our article on wedding rings. Wedding rings took on a slightly different meaning in ancient Rome. More than love, they symbolized a man's ownership of his wife. For Romans, marriage was a contract that involved a woman's ownership being passed from her father to her husband, and the wedding ring was a way to mark this ownership. Women were given two rings: one gold ring to wear at special events, and one iron ring to wear at home. The gold represented wealth, while the iron represented permanence. 今天最后一个单词，我们看到的是 symbolize。这个字当做动词，它有象征、代表的意思。例如 ，The statue of the soldier symbolized the contributions of all the local residents who served in the military. 那一座士兵的雕像象征了当地所有从军居民的贡献。Wedding rings took on a slightly different meaning in ancient Rome. Okay, Rome again is an ancient civilization, and they did have wedding rings then, but they took on a different meaning there. To take on in this particular case means they had a slightly different meaning, or they adapted a slightly different meaning there. In ancient Rome, wedding rings meant something different from what they meant in ancient Egypt. Yeah, wedding rings acquired. A slightly different meaning in ancient Rome, or they kind of got a slightly different meaning in ancient Rome. So yeah, in Egypt they might have meant something slightly different. In Rome, yeah, they did. They kind of took on a slightly different meaning. These wedding rings did. Anyways, moving on. More than love, our article continues. They, the wedding ring, symbolized a man's ownership. Of his wife. Wow, that doesn't sound very good to me. No one owns anyone else. But in ancient Rome, apparently, they believed that when a man and a woman got married, that the woman was the man's property. How weird! Yeah, the wedding ring symbolized a man's ownership of his wife. So that's kind of a tricky custom to understand. And yeah, the word symbolize, the verb I should say, symbolize, is also kind of tricky to understand as well. So let's talk about it right now. To symbolize is to stand for something. 
else. Yeah, if something is being symbolized, a symbol is being used. By the way, a symbol is just something that has meaning over and above that thing itself. So yeah, this wedding ring meant something in ancient Rome. It meant that a man owned a woman. Gee, nowadays it seems to be the opposite. But in any case, for Romans, marriage was a contract that involved a woman's ownership being passed from her father to her husband. Okay, so that's what marriage was. It was a kind of contract, a business deal that meant that the woman was no longer owned by her father. Now she was owned by her husband, and the wedding ring was a way to mark this ownership. So if you had a wedding ring and you You placed it on the finger of your wife. That meant you owned her. It was a warning to other men: don't come near this woman because she is owned by someone. You'll get in big trouble if you try to talk to her. Anyways, let's learn some more here. Women, it says, were given two rings: one gold ring to wear at special events, and one iron ring to wear at home. Yeah, the gold represented wealth, while the iron represented. Permanence. How about that? Now here we've got the word permanence to talk about. Permanence is the state of being permanent. That is not temporary. Yeah, permanence is the noun. Permanent is the adjective. And yes, if something is permanent, it is meant to last for a long time, maybe even forever. All right, folks. With that, it is time for us to take a break. But don't go away. The Chinese teacher is waiting in the wings. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看见文法重点。课文一开始提到 ，simply look at someone's left hand and you might learn something about them, whether they're married or not. 只要看一个人左手，你或许就能得知关于他们的某件事，他们是否结婚了。好，这边要介绍的是以连接词 whether 来引导名词子句的用法。Whether 引导名词子句，那它的句型是。Whether 主词加上动词加上 or not， 这表示是否怎么样怎么样。句尾的 or not 也可以省略不用。那这个名词子句它在句子里面就可以当主词啊、受词或者是补语。像课文里面他说的 whether they're married or not， 就是用来补充说明前面的 something， 那也就是作为 learn 的受词。好，我们来看几个例句。Whether Mia comes to the party or not doesn't matter to me. 无论 Mia 是否会出席派对，这对我来说都不重要。那我们的 Whether Mia comes to the party or not 就是名词子句，它就当主词来用。再来 ，I don't care whether he believes me or not. 无论他是否相信我，我都不在乎。那么 ，whether he believes me or not 就是当名词子句，然后作为动词 care 的受词。再来 ，the question is whether you want this job or not。问题就在于你是不是想要这份工作。那么 ，whether you want this job or not 就是当主词补语来用喽。另外要提醒同学们 ，if 它也有是否的意思，也可以用来引导名词子句，只是要特别注意。If 引导的名词子句是不能当主词的，它只能当受词或是补语来用。好，接着读到课文第二部分，有一个句子说 ：“The ancient Egyptians are thought to have been the first to wear wedding rings。”一般认为古埃及人最早开始戴婚戒。那样表达一般认为怎么样？一般相信怎么样？那常见的句型是有三种。第一种是 people think 或是 people believe 加上 that 子句。第二种句型是。It 加上 be thought 或者是 be believed 再加 that 子句，那这两种句型都是比较客观的表达方式。例如 ，It is believed that the tree is over two hundred years old。一般认为那棵树它两百岁了，是一棵老树。好，那第三种句型是主词加上 be thought to 加原形动词，或者是 be believed to 加上原形动词。当我们把句型中这个 to 加原形动词，把它改成 to have 加上过去分词，那这就表示说 have 加上过去分词这个所描述的动作发生时间是比主要子句还要早。好，那如果再用虚主词 it 来改写的时候 ，that 子句里面的动词呢，通常会用过去式。好，那我们来看课文句子来讲解会比较清楚。The ancient Egyptians are thought To have been the first to wear wedding rings, 我们用虚主词 it 改写，应该是说 
It is thought that the ancient Egyptians were 用过去式 were the first to wear wedding rings. 好，再看一个例句。The song is believed to have been inspired by a painting. 一般认为那一首歌是受到一幅画的启发。那受到这个画的启发是更早发生的事，所以用 to have been inspired by a painting。接着我们用 it 来改写的话，记得 that 子句里面用过去式，所以是 it is believed that the song was inspired by a painting。好，以上是今天重点整理。我们接下来回顾今天的单词吧。Loyalty. Annie was torn between loyalty to her family and her desire to chase her dreams. Eternity. The couple promised to love each other for eternity. Braided. David wore cargo shorts and braided sandals to the beach. Sturdy. We ensured that the bookcase would be sturdy by attaching it to the wall. Demonstrate. The crowded streets demonstrate a need for wider sidewalks and roads. Symbolize. A gold star sticker often symbolizes a job well done. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.